One of the first things I wanted to do for my marathon weekend vlog was show you all everything I packed. And the sad thing is this is not even everything. I'm probably gonna throw some other things in my bag like as I actually start packing it up. But I'm gonna go ahead and go through like most of the things that I am packing. That way you all can see them. So if you were ever preparing for a marathon, you probably won't take this much stuff. I have to prepare for like a lot of different situations and weather and all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna show you what I am bringing just so you at least have a general idea. Let's start over here with clothes. So this is like my school sweatshirt, it just says Croft and Pride. Since we are all teachers, we thought we would all bring like an item of clothing from our school and maybe get a picture taken together. I don't know if it'll happen, but we're gonna try. This is my black Highlands like hoodie. I plan on actually wearing this to the airport and then I'm gonna wear it to the expo, which I'm going to on Friday once I arrive and I'm doing a podcast interview there. So I need to wear something Highland. So I'm thinking of wearing that. I then have my Boston Marathon jacket. As you can tell, tag is still on it. I have not put it on. I have not taken the tag off. I am not doing anything until I finish the race and then I can proudly wear this. This is my frog tog. So this is an ultra light. It's like a light rain jacket. It's actually a suit. So it has the pants too. I'm just going to wear the jacket, but this is going to be to keep me dry on marathon day because as of right now, it looks like it is going to pour down rain the entire time and it's going to be pretty miserable. So my coach recommended to me that I get this. I got mine from Walmart, but you can also get it from like Dick's Sporting Goods. Now mine is a medium. So it's gonna be pretty big on me, but that's okay. I would rather it be big and me be dry than not have it and be <laughs> extremely miserable. Then I have my two Highlands tank tops. Now the weather is not gonna be ideal for tank tops. So I'll show you what I'm doing to kind of counteract that if you will. I have a couple of hats. I am bringing an Orioles hat because on Saturday afternoon, our entire team is going to a Red Sox game and ironically they are playing the Orioles, which is my home team. So I am bringing my Orioles hat. I'm bringing my Saucony. This is like a running hat. So it's like a moisture wicking material, but I don't think I'm actually going to wear this on race day because because it is pretty thin. I think I'm gonna wear this one instead. So this is a black Nike hat. It's actually a golf hat, but it has like a very like waterproofish kind of material. I don't know if it's actually waterproof or not. When I go to the expo, I may try to see if I can find a different hat that's definitely waterproof. And if so, I'll get that one. But if not, I think this is what I'm gonna wear on marathon day. And then I may wear this one for like the 5K. Then obviously I have socks. So I'm bringing four pairs of socks. Three of them are Belega socks. And then I think these ones, I think these ones are my Swift Wick socks socks, which I'm thinking I'm actually going to wear on race day. They're a little bit thinner than my Belega one. So next I have just a regular rain jacket. So I'm not going to wear this to run, but I'm going to have this for like walking around because it's supposed to rain Saturday, Sunday, and race day on Monday. So that's like my backup rain jacket. This is like a fleece. I'm probably going to wear this on the bus on my way to the marathon, and then I will take it off before the race and just donate it. But I'm going to wear that to kind of keep my body warm. And then I have just two like race shirts. This is from the New Jersey Marathon and this is from a 10 mile race that I did in Salisbury. I'm going to wear those underneath of my Highland tanks because I think on Saturday when we run the 5k in the morning it's going to be in like the 40s and rainy so I'm not wearing a tank top. I will probably wear the blue one for the 5k and then underneath of my tank top on race day I'll wear the black one. This is my first I run the miles and I teach the kids shirt. I posted a picture of this on my Instagram. I've gotten a lot of questions about where I got this. Highlands actually sent it to me so I don't know what to tell you in terms of like where to buy it, but it's super, super comfortable. I'm not sure exactly when I will wear that, but I'm definitely bringing it because everyone on the team got one and we'll probably get a picture where we're all wearing it or something. Then I have my Oriole shirt to wear to the baseball game. These are all like pants and shorts. So I have jeans to wear to the game. The rest of the time I'm probably going to be in like athletic pants. So I have a couple of pairs of like black athletic pants. I have these darker blue pants, which I think I'm going to wear to the airport and then to the expo on Friday. This light lighter blue pair I think is my plan for race day. It'll kind of go with the Highlands blue and then that's why I'm wearing the black shirt underneath instead of the blue shirt. And then I have two pairs of shorts. I don't really know if I'm going to wear shorts but I'm going to bring them just in case. And then real quick, I'll go ahead and show you my shoes. These are a very old pair of shoes that I have, as you can tell by the shoelace that's like coming apart. I'm gonna wear these on race day morning because I have to board a bus at like 7.45 and I'm not running until 11.15. So I'm gonna wear these beforehand and then I will change into my race shoes right before and then I'm going to donate these ones. And then I have my black Nike slides. These are what I'm gonna wear probably after the race. We actually get to pack a bag and Highland's going to take it to the university club, which 
is right around the finish and we are meeting them there. We'll get to shower and we'll have our bags and we'll get to change and all that. So I'm super excited about that. This is just a plastic container that has all of like my paperwork. So in here is my bib for the 5k. I don't have my marathon bib yet. I will get that at the expo. And then I have my runner passport, my participant guide. Um, I don't think that even needs to be in there, but whatever. And my participant guide for the 5k. So I like to bring those with me. I'll probably read them like the night before. Let's go ahead and come here and talk about headphones. So these are my Beats Studio wireless headphones. Love them. They have been what I've worn all of my training. However, if it is pouring down rain and if it rains as much as it is supposed to rain, I'm not going to be able to wear these. It's just not going to happen because I don't want to risk them not working like they're I think they're sweat resistant but they are not water resistant so I don't want a chance ruining these so I think for race day I'm gonna use these instead I picked these up from Target tonight they were like $23 I think they're by Sony but they're for sports and it does say that they are water resistant and they kind of go around your ears so I don't think I have to worry about them falling out so I will try them on and hopefully as long as they're somewhat comfortable that will be my plan that way if they do get ruined by the water it's not a big deal because they weren't super expensive then I have some massaging things for after the race. So this is my GoFit hand massager or something. I don't know what it's called, but I got this from Target. I think you can also get it on Amazon. I will link it for you. And then my stick roller, which is my one true love. That is for after the race and kind of before the race as well. Then I have gloves at the expo. I'm going to see if I can get a different pair of gloves. Um, these are what I wore in like cold weather, but I want to see if I can get some kind of glove that's waterproof. If not, my coach said we can put like food service gloves over top of these to help make them like waterproof but whatever we'll see I also have this as just a backup pair this was actually given to me by a student for Christmas as just like throwaway gloves so if I end up deciding to bring gloves but I'm not going to wear them during the race that will probably be my go-to just to wear before I also have this fleece like headband it's really to keep your ears warm I don't know if I'm going to need it or not but I'm bringing it just in case I have two water bottles this one fits inside of my flip belt which is right up here love this thing I have no idea why I waited so long to get one of these I will link it for you best like 20 25 dollars 30 dollars whatever it was best money I have ever spent this is what is going to carry my phone on race day. It's going to carry my energy chews. It's going to carry my water bottle. This fits perfectly inside of it. Love it. And I haven't decided if I also want to carry this water bottle. I probably won't. This is like a handheld one by Ultimate Direction. I think I'm just going to go with this and then any of the water stops along the course should be fine. But I like to carry my own water like just in case. Now the fun stuff. So this is a waterproofer spray. I picked this up from Dick Sporting Goods. My coach recommended to all of us that we waterproof our shoes. So if it is definitely going to rain, which at this point it's looking like it is, but I'll figure this out like Saturday night, I'm going to go ahead and spray my race shoes with that waterproofing spray. And then I have Aquaphor Petroleum Jelly. So here's the deal. When you run in the rain, especially for a long distance race, such as a marathon, water leads to chafing and blistering. And that is absolutely not good when you're running over 26 miles. So my coach recommended to us to use like petroleum jelly. He said to put it all over our feet or any other areas that are prone to chafing or blistering. So I'm going to take this with me on race day morning. I will put it on my feet and anywhere else I feel the need to put it and then I will just pitch it or donate it or whatever before I actually race. Then some stuff that I'm packing in baggies. I'm going to have a baggie of like food type stuff. So all of my cliff blocks, I'm bringing five packs. I will probably only carry like four with me on race day. They also have a couple of these available on the course, but I like to have my own just in case as well. I'm, I'm definitely the type of person who likes to be prepared. I have some Bioplasma Sport. This is by Highland. So this is like a recovery. You put it in your water and drink it. So I brought five of those. I'm probably not going to need all five, but I will do one like after the 5k, maybe on Sunday as well. And then definitely a couple after the marathon. I have a pack of gum because I'm a big gum chewer. I love to chew gum when I run. And then some Cliff Bars. I'm probably going to grab some more from downstairs. I also will probably grab some Lenny and Larry's cookies to take with me as well. But I will take some snacks with me on race day morning. I'm going to take a zip Block bag, have the stuff in there. Whatever I eat, I eat. Whatever I don't, I will throw away or donate or whatever. Because obviously, once you're in the athlete's village and then you go to start the race, like you can't take stuff like that with you. So, final bag this is a lot of like medical ish kind of stuff. I am bringing some extra large band aids. I'm going to put one on my foot because my blister is so so. It's been okay. It hasn't been hurting, but I can see it hurting if it's raining and all that. So, I want to have them with me. And then I'm bringing a whole bunch of different Highland products. So, Nerve Time. 
tonic is to like calm you down, which I will probably need because I'm gonna be super nervous. This one is like a sleep aid, and then this one is for in the morning to help you like wake up. Leg cramp tablets. I'm gonna bring these with me in my fuel belt. I'm gonna bring them in a Ziploc baggie. That way they don't get wet because they are like quick dissolving. So them getting wet would not be a good thing whatsoever. Arnica, which this is for like pain relief and stuff. I'm definitely gonna use that after in Arna Sport. I can't remember like the exact difference with them, but I'm bringing both of them just in case. Trumax is also pain relief. This is like an ointment. Leg cramp ointment. I will probably put some of this on before I run. Muscle therapy gel with Arnica will mostly be for after I run. Body glide, absolute huge necessity. And then Icy Hot, that's to help me after my race. So I'm gonna go ahead and like pack all of this up. I have to get up around 3.30 in the morning to get to the airport. So it's gonna be a very early start. I will probably take some of that good morning by Highlands to help wake me up and then it is marathon weekend. Good morning, YouTube. I'm officially headed to the airport. It's currently about four o'clock. I had to get up at 3.15 and I was not happy about it, but I am now up. My flight for Boston leaves at 6.20 a.m. I'm supposed to get to Boston around 7.45 a.m. Then Billy and I are headed to check in at the hotel. They're probably not gonna be able to actually check us in, but we'll have them hold our bags. We're gonna grab some food and then we are going to the expo around 11 and I'm getting interviewed for a podcast with Bob Babbitt at 11.30. Alright, it's really loud right now, so I apologize, but we just got to our gate. It's about 5.45. Our flight takes off at 6.20. It's about an hour and 20 minute flight. I have a documentary on Netflix that I was watching on Usain Bolt that I think I'm going to finish during the flight. And Billy and I just grabbed some Chick-fil-A, so we're going to go ahead and eat. I got a yogurt and fruit parfait, and then I got a chicken biscuit. So we just arrived at our hotel. It's not even nine o'clock yet, so we're really lucky that they actually had a room ready for us. So this is called the Elise. It used to be called the Chandler Inn, but it recently changed like management or ownership or something. So now it's called the Elise, which is really ironic because fun fact, that is my middle name, A-L-I-S-E. It's spelled the exact same way. So I thought I'd go ahead and show you our room. So everything is pineapple themed. I guess the like owner now of this chain is called the pineapple or something. I don't know. So it's a little bit weird that there's pineapples everywhere, but that's okay. I'm, I'm cool with it. So we've got like robes here and we've got slippers and then an umbrella and then this is my stuff little table Here's the bed. I do love that picture. That's behind the bed I don't understand the huskies There were huskies all over the lobby too And I don't understand the correlation between pineapples and huskies, but it's okay The bed looks really comfy though Then there is this right in front of a nice big TV So there's a Keurig and some coffee, which is really nice and then this little thing which we're not gonna get this because it's $25, but there's all kinds of like snacks in there. Sweet, savory, spicy, chocolatey. And then there's Billy's stuff. Here's his side of the bed. We have a nice little view outside of the window. It's a little bit dirty, but that's okay. We can see the street. And then here is the bathroom. So it has some nice tile and everything. Shower looks really, really nice. It's a little bit small, but that's okay. The 
Billy and I will just have to get ready at separate times. So we've gotten settled a little bit and I'm starting to get hungry even though I did have Chick-fil-A at the airport on the way here. I have been starving since I woke up so that kind of tied me over but I'm still really hungry. Billy and I are gonna head out. We're gonna try to find some place for breakfast and then we're gonna head over to the expo. The expo opens at 11 and then my interview with Bob Babbitt is scheduled for 11.30 so I'll have just enough time to like get my bib and everything and then go do the interview and then we'll probably walk around the expo so I will take you all along with me, show you breakfast, show you the expo, and catch up with you later. So I just finished up at the expo. It's currently about 12.30. I also did my interview. Hi, there's Billy. <laughs> He's trying to hide. So the interview actually went pretty well. I'm gonna share it on my Facebook page and I'll see if I can maybe share like clips of it or something on Instagram, but you all saw clips here in my vlog. I forgot that I had Billy record it. So you'll see part of it anyway. Then when we were walking around the expo, I actually ran into my cousin and my aunt and my cousin's daughter. So my cousin is also running. Her name is Amber. And I knew that they were gonna be here. It's really ironic that we <laughs> actually ran into each other. You know, there's thousands of people here and we actually found each other so I caught up with them a little bit Billy and I are now headed out to do like a trolley tour of Boston since it's our first time here Long time no vlog. Billy and I just got back to the hotel. It's currently 6.15 p.m. and I'm literally ready for bed. Waking up at 3.15 has definitely caught up to me. And when we were doing our tour, so we did like the trolley tour, I was literally like falling asleep because I'm so tired. But I've had a phenomenal day. The expo was amazing and then the tour was amazing. It's been really nice weather. I think it's in the 60s, but it definitely felt like it was in the 50s. I got a little bit chilly when we were on the tour because the windows were open. So like there were crosswinds and all that. But overall, I've had a great day. I've enjoyed seeing the city, but I am very tired. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the things I got at the expo and I'm gonna call it a night. Billy and I are gonna try to get to bed really early and then I have to be up tomorrow. I have to meet the other team members in the lobby around, I think it's 7.15. So I'm probably gonna have to get up like 6.30ish, 6.45, somewhere in there. So I will catch up with you all in the morning. So here is all the stuff I came home with from the expo. Let's start with the stuff that I got like in my marathon bag. So I picked up my bib. I'm number 3033. Six, and then this is in there so it has a sticker and this is like for your phone to hold cards I'm not gonna actually use it but that's okay and then the book and then this is a bag oops there we go this is the bag for putting stuff in for the start area so like you can only have stuff in this bag and you can't bring anything else into the start area in the athletes village this is from Highlands hey <laughs> they are the official cramp relief sponsor of the Boston Marathon so they included some free samples of their leg cramp tablets and like some of the cream stuff for all of the athletes, which is awesome. Um, this is my runner's passport that I brought with me in order to get my bib. Then I have my shirt that we get. So I haven't actually opened it up yet, but it's just a blue color. And then it has like kind of a silver, like the Boston Marathon logo up on the one side and it's long sleeves. And then we got Cliff Blocks, the ginger ale flavor, and then a bottle opener. So this is all stuff that I purchased because the theme for today was treat yourself. I figure this will probably be the only time I ever do this race. So I definitely kind of splurged a little bit. First of all, this
this is the poster that has all of the athletes names on it which is really really cool of course mine can't be seen through like the plastic I'll have to actually unroll it but still that's pretty cool I got this sweatshirt it's just like a basic Boston Marathon sweatshirt but it's Adidas it's black and white you all know I love my black and white and as soon as I saw it I was like I have to have that this is a magnet for my car so it says Boston then 26.2 and I got a hat so it's just a black like running hat and it has the Boston Marathon logo on it and then I got this short sleeve shirt so again it just has the Boston Marathon logo but I loved that it was the colors of the Boston Marathon and it's like one of the moisture wicking materials so I'm super excited for all this I cannot wait to wear some of my gear after the race I'm gonna go ahead and put this away clear off the bed and get into bed because I am so tired right now good morning YouTube first of all yes I'm in the bathroom second of all I'm whispering because Billy is still sleeping it's about seven o'clock I got up around 6 45 and just quickly changed for the 5k I did not dry my hair last night after I showered no makeup like I really don't care I'm going out to run it is not a fashion show so I have to meet my teammates down in the lobby at 7 15 we're gonna walk over to the Boston 5k this morning we're really just doing it as like a fun run like it's not you know to get your fastest time or anything it's just today's run in preparation for the marathon and then after we're done the 5k we're gonna walk back to the hotel and we are having like a team brunch here and we are getting tickets to go to the Red Sox game tonight which very ironically they are playing the Orioles so after I get the tickets I'm gonna come back change into my Orioles gear and then Billy and I are gonna take the shuttle over to Fenway watch the game grab dinner and that will pretty much be my day now I am not gonna take my vlogging camera with me I kind of had planned on it but I would have to carry it for the whole 5k in order to have it for the brunch and that's just not gonna happen so I will catch up with you all after I have gotten my Red Sox tickets and after the brunch before the game <laughs> So it is now about 11.20. As you all saw, I was able to grab some clips on my phone, so I know the video quality is not the best. It's not as good as my vlogging camera, but I did want to be able to capture some of it for you all. The 5K was amazing. I mean, it went by so fast because it's a 5K, and like after all the training I've done, it felt super short, but it felt good. I just ran at an average of like 10.06 pace because I didn't want to take it too fast because I obviously don't want to burn out before the marathon on Monday. Then we came back to the hotel and we had the team breakfast, which was also amazing. They had like fruit and bagels and stuff out, but then we also got to order from the menu. So I had some fruit, I had half of a bagel, and then I also had a breakfast burrito. Billy and I are now about to head down to the lobby. We are gonna be taking a shuttle that the team is providing to Fenway Park, and then we're watching the Red Sox play the Orioles today. Before I head down to the shuttle, I wanted to show you all this. Highlands gave us these at breakfast, which was super sweet of them. They've already done so much for us, but like it just keeps coming, and I'm very thankful. But these little cups are super cute. So it says Boston 18, it has the apples as the O's, and it has a skyline, and then it says Highlands Power, and it's just like a metal cup super cute and then all of these like tattoos so Highlands powered Boston I'm a teacher and I run with like the apples in black and gold which you all know are my favorite color so that's perfect this little pin that says Highlands Boston 122nd marathon and then these hats so these are by head sweats so they're made to like absorb the sweat when you run but this side it has like hashtag Highlands powered Boston 2018 and it's reversible and this side has the Highlands logo on it if I can pull it there you go Highlands logo and then it has like the skyline which is really really cool.
life update. It is about eight o'clock. I am in bed and this is the second time in a row that I've gotten in bed around eight o'clock and that never happens for me. I don't know what it's been but the past two days have just been extremely exhausting but like in the best way possible. I mean I've been doing things like from the moment I get up until the moment I get in bed so I'm sure that's why I'm so tired and it's just been very overwhelming but like overwhelming because I've been so genuinely happy. So let me quickly talk you through the afternoon since the last time that I vlogged. We went to the Orioles and Red Sox game. Unfortunately the Orioles were horrible which was a little bit embarrassing on our part but I had a lot of fun being there. That stadium is really really cool because it's so old and I thoroughly enjoyed like the atmosphere and just getting to hang out with my teammates and all that so I had a fantastic afternoon. Billy and I actually left at the seventh inning stretch because we were freezing. Billy had no jacket and I think it was in like the 40s outside and I had just like a light zip up jacket and I was really cold. So we went ahead and left. We walked down to Yard House which was a restaurant like right down from Fenway Park and Billy and I have been to Yard House before and we absolutely love it but we don't have them at home. I think the closest one is in like Virginia. So whenever we are traveling and we come across one we love to go there. So we had a fantastic dinner and then we Ubered to the Prudential Center. So that's like a big building. There's shops and stuff there and there's a restaurant like at the top of the building which we were not going to eat at because it's super expensive but they have like an observatory area with all these windows where you can look out and like see the city. However we got up there and it was like $20 per person. We're like that's insane. So we did not do it. We walked around the mall area a little bit and then we went ahead and Ubered back to the hotel because I am so tired and I just showered and I'm getting in bed. I do need to work on editing my classroom vlog because that's supposed to be up tomorrow. Fingers crossed I can get it all edited tonight because if I get really tired I'm just gonna go to bed. Like it's not worth staying up. In order to edit a vlog I need to focus on myself this weekend and what I need to do for my body to be able to rest and recover and if that means going to bed early that's what I'm gonna do. However we were supposed to have a 7 30 a.m shakeout run tomorrow morning with coach Mike who has been our coach just as a team but he actually emailed us this afternoon and canceled it so tomorrow it's actually supposed to snow here which is crazy to me because it is April and he didn't want us going out and a getting cold or number one getting cold and number two getting our shoes wet because it's either going to be raining or snowing like all day tomorrow and it's going to be like that on Monday and we're already going to get absolutely soaked in the marathon and he didn't want us to get our shoes and everything wet on Sunday just for a shakeout run so he canceled that. Billy and I do have to get up and go to a brunch in the morning which I'm actually really excited about and real quick while I'm kind of talking about the weather so the current weather forecast for the marathon is still pouring down rain in fact it's supposed to rain like two and a half inches which is a lot and like 20 mile per hour wind gusts so it should be a very interesting race. <laughs> I'm getting more nervous slash excited as it gets closer. I mean I am nervous but I think I'm more so just excited like I'm here and just being surrounded by all of my team members has been amazing and I'm just thoroughly enjoying every single second of it like I've been having the time of my life so I'm gonna go ahead and get to editing get to bed and I'll catch up with you all in the morning. Good morning YouTube. I was able to sleep in a little bit this morning at least compared to how early I have been getting up. I woke up around nine I just showered and well I didn't shower I showered last night but I got ready. Billy and I are about to head to the morning brunch which is at Margot's house. She works for Highlands. I'm not sure what her like official position is but she's like the brains behind the whole operation for why we are here. So we're gonna go to her house have brunch. I will film some of it for you all and then I'm not sure what we're doing the rest of the day. We're mostly just kind of relaxing because tomorrow is race day. So Billy and I are home from the brunch. It was absolutely amazing. Although the walk there was freezing. It's like lightly snowing outside. And all I have is like a thin like black athletic jacket. So we were both really cold. But on the way back, we actually stopped at a 7-Eleven because I needed to get some food to have for like tonight slash tomorrow morning. So first of all, I got a big gallon of water. Now I'm not gonna drink the whole thing before race day because while you do want to be very hydrated, you don't wanna be too hydrated. And then that leads to having to go to the bathroom during the race, which I don't want, but I'm gonna just drink 
as I feel necessary tonight and like tomorrow morning. And then I got a loaf of wheat bread. So my plan was to get bagels. However, 7-Eleven did not have bagels. So I opted for wheat bread. Tonight, I will probably have a peanut butter sandwich and then that's what I'm gonna have before my race in the morning. Usually I eat a bagel with peanut butter and a banana and that's why I got two bananas, one for tonight, one for tomorrow. But since they didn't have bagels, I'm just gonna have a peanut butter sandwich. It won't be a huge difference. I think it will be fine. So I am all ready to go for race day tomorrow. Life update, it is now five o'clock. I've literally just been staying in my hotel room since the last time that I vlogged. Billy and I, first of all, I had to do some things on my computer, I answer emails, things like that. And then Billy and I watched the Boston documentary. It's literally just called Boston. I will link it for you down in the description box. If you are a marathon runner or you wanna get into marathon running, I highly recommend it. It was excellent, perfect motivation for tomorrow. However, I just checked the weather forecast and the real field temperature while I am running is gonna be in the 20s, so that's fun. And the wind gusts are gonna top out at like 51 miles per hour. So fingers crossed that I don't blow away. Um, you know, at this point, I just want to finish and I want to enjoy the race as much as one possibly can in the wind and the cold and the pouring down rain. Billy and I are about to head out and grab some dinner. I'm looking to get some pasta, so I think we're gonna go to Maggiano's. I have officially laid out all of my stuff for race day. So I'm gonna quickly go through, show you like what I'm wearing, what I'm bringing with me, all of that. This is my frog tog, which I will definitely be wearing because it's going to be pouring down rain the entire time. Plus there's gonna be 50 mile per hour wind gusts, which means I definitely wanna have a waterproof and wind resistant outer layer. And that's what this will be. These are a pair of just like cheap throwaway gloves, but I think I'm gonna wear these to get like on the bus. Cause we have to walk over to the bus. And then I'm actually gonna put my other gloves, which I'll show you in a second over top of these. I'm gonna have a double layer of gloves because I don't want my hands to be cold at all. For my actual outfit that I'm gonna wear in the morning, I'm gonna have my Nike hat, which I'm going to wear during the race under the hood of my frog tog because the brim of it will help keep rain like off of my glasses. These are a cheap pair of socks. They're like a sock any pair of socks, but they are not like non-cotton. So I'm only wearing these onto the bus. I'm not gonna wear these when I actually race. I'm gonna throw these out before and donate them. I have a sports bra. I I have this fleece like zip up thing that I'm gonna wear on the bus to keep me warm, but I'm not gonna wear it during the race. I'm gonna throw this off and donate it. I am gonna wear my Highlands tank and that's gonna be over top of this like old black race shirt that I have. This is gonna be my innermost layer and it's tight and it forms to my body. So that way it will just help to keep me warmer. You want a tight fitting innermost layer. And then I'm gonna wear my Lululemon Align pants. I had originally planned to wear a pair of blue pants, but they're only capris and I don't want my ankles to get cold so I'm gonna wear these because they are full length pants and then these are like old soccer pants that I have I'm gonna wear these over top of my Lululemon pants on the bus to help keep warm so that's all of the clothes that I'm gonna wear in the morning these are actually the shoes I'm gonna wear these are a really old pair of running shoes that I have these are the glycerin and you can tell they're really old because of that and the holes I showed you all this when I packed them but I'm gonna wear these onto the bus that way if they get wet I don't really care plus I will have this cheap pair of socks that I'm going to throw away so if those get wet I don't really care here are my actual racing shoes. I have double bag these. So I put them inside a gallon bag and then flipped them over and put another gallon bag over the other side so that they are completely watertight and I don't have to worry about water getting in them. I also have sprayed them with that waterproofing spray. I did two coats of it. So hopefully I should be good for that. And then I also have my watch. This is the Garmin Forerunner 235. This is all stuff that I am bringing with me to Athletes Village. Now, the great thing about being part of the Highlands team is I actually get to stay on the bus. They have a charter bus for us. It is heated. There's a bathroom and we get to stay on that until it's time to head out to the start line, which is a huge blessing because most of the runners have to just sit in Athletes Village and it's soaking wet and it's raining and all that. But this is the bag that I'm gonna take with me. There's a bag under here. I just haven't put it all away yet. I'm gonna have a thing of Gatorade. I'm also going to have my water bottle for my flip belt that will be filled up. These are the actual race socks that I'm gonna wear. These are my Belega Hidden Comfort socks. This is my flip belt. This is a fleece headband. I'm gonna wear this underneath of my hat to help keep my ears warm. These are my thicker gloves. These are a pair of Asics gloves and I'm gonna wear these over top of those blue ones. And in between the two layers of gloves, I'm actually gonna wear a pair of like food service gloves, like the kind of gloves that lunch ladies wear where they're just a thin plastic. So that way it will hopefully keep my innermost layer of gloves waterproof. 
Then I have my four sets of Cliff Blocks, one of the Tropical Punch flavor, and then three Mountain Berry. I will probably do two Mountain Berry, a Tropical Punch, and then finish with a Mountain Berry. This is a Cliff Bar that I will eat sometime while I am on the bus because we're gonna board the bus at 7.45 and I do not run until 11.15. So I'm gonna bring my breakfast with me and I will also have this as a snack, but if I don't eat it, I will just donate it. I have my water resistant, or actually I think they're waterproof headphones that I got. These are by Sony and I need to test those out tonight. I have body glide which I'm gonna put on in the morning and then also before my race to hopefully prevent chafing. I have some leg cramp quick dissolve tablets. Now I'm actually gonna put these into a little plastic baggie and have them inside of my flip belt. So the plastic baggie will keep them from getting wet and then I will have access to them during the race in case I start to get a cramp. And then I'm also bringing my Aquaphor. This is like petroleum jelly. This is gonna go all over my feet before I run and probably like on my chest too just to prevent any chafing. And then this is like a brand new thing. I don't know how extensive it was Billy bought it for me but I'm just going to bring it with me and then donate it or like throw it out afterwards because obviously I'm not going to use the whole thing but anything you bring with you to Athletes Village you have to get rid of or carry with you so all of this stuff I'm either going to wear or get rid of before the race and then this is all the stuff I'm going to leave with on my body in the morning. Last minute thing I know I told you I was going to put some of the Highlands Cramp Relief Quick Dissolving Tablets in a plastic baggie I have done so I'm taking five I plan to take two before I run and then I'll have three for during my run run if needed. And I forgot my coach Mike had recommended that I do this. So I actually took all of my cliff blocks and put them into a single plastic baggie. That way they're much easier to get out while I'm running. This baggie is just going to go in my fuel belt rather than trying to open up each individual package and deal with that, especially when things are wet, is not going to be an easy task. So if I have them all in a Ziploc baggie, it should be nice and easy to get them out when needed. Life update. It is now eight o'clock. I have everything ready to go for tomorrow. Everything's laid out that I'm wearing in the morning. My bags are ready to go with me on the bus. So I have about an hour to kind of chill out for now. And then our team is actually having like a meeting out in the hallway, like literally right outside of my room, just so we can all kind of meet together one last time before the race and kind of like a pregame pep talk, if you will. And then after that, I'm going to come back, shower, dry my hair and get into bed. I'm hoping that I can fall asleep early. Although the great thing is I'm probably going to get up around 630 ish, which isn't super, super early. Typically for marathons, I have to get up around like four, but because Boston doesn't start until later in the day I don't have to get up as early and then even once I get up and board the bus I'm gonna have several hours until I run so I should have plenty of time to wake up but that is the plan for the rest of the night good morning YouTube it is race day morning it is currently about 6 45 I got up at 6 30 all I had to do was quickly throw on my clothes so I'm kind of finishing packing up some of my stuff I am taking a duffel bag down to the lobby and the Highlands team is actually going to transport it to the U Club which is the University Club where we are all meeting up afterwards so that will be really nice because as soon as I finish my race walk over there I get to shower and change and all that and then I have my two bags that I'm taking with me one with my shoes and one with all of like my stuff for the bus so I'm just making sure that's all ready and then I'm gonna head down to the lobby around 705 we're supposed to meet down there at 715 and then we're walking over to the charter buses together the charter buses board at 745 and then they will leave at 8 o'clock to go to Athletes Village in terms of sleep last night I slept better than I usually do on a marathon I think it's because I didn't have to get up as early typically like I said I have to get up around like 4 and I'm paranoid of oversleeping, so I'm constantly waking up. I woke up a couple of times last night, but not as much as I usually do, so overall I feel pretty well rested, and I'm gonna have a couple hours on the bus before I actually run, so I should be good to go. I'm not really feeling super nervous. I mean, I am nervous, but at the same time, I'm just at the point where I'm like, I wanna just do it and get it done with, and I mean, not get it done with, like I wanna enjoy every second, but when your coach emails you in the morning and says current wind chill is 18 degrees, yeah, I know that it's not gonna be the most fun run ever, and it's gonna be a little bit messy with the weather but I just want to go out I want to enjoy it I want to get it done and then be able to look back and reflect on it now I am packing my vlogging camera in the duffel bag that they're taking to the U Club so as soon as I get there and get changed and all that I will be able to catch up with you all Hello 
there. Long time to vlog. I'm going to honestly keep this kind of short. I will do more of like a reflection once I get home, but I'm just honestly so tired right now and I'm in bed and I don't have much energy to talk, but I will tell you I finished, which is awesome. I did not PR. I have a huge blister on my foot that's like ripped open. I was shaking the entire time, but I finished and that's all that matters. I can say that those are the most miserable running conditions I have ever experienced my entire life and probably ever will experience. You know, I've seen races like that on TV, but like actually being in it is a completely different story. And you know, I've ran in cold and I've ran in wind and I've ran in rain, but having them all together seriously was a trifecta. And I just have never felt so miserable in my entire life. And it started early. You know, usually I don't start to struggle until towards the end. I was struggling the entire time, like from beginning to end, it was never easy. My feet were soaked before I even started running because we had to walk a mile from the bus to the start line and it was just crazy but it was memorable and I mean it was Boston so like I will never ever forget that and I'm so incredibly thankful to Highlands because they have given us first class treatment from beginning to start this weekend it has been incredible and as soon as I finished I had to walk over to the university club and once I got in they played our power song and they had camera crew following us and one of the ladies that works for them like was pulling off my jacket and then gave me a towel to warm up. I had to go get pictures and then she took me up to the locker room so I could shower, which that was so needed because at that point I could not stop shaking. Like I was so cold and it was just a different level. I mean, I, you know, towards the end of a marathon, I typically feel really tired. My muscles hurt, all that. It was just a different feeling today and I don't know how to explain it. I was very lightheaded for a lot of the run and it was just crazy. <laughs> and I've never felt like I've earned a medal as much as I did today, but it's done. I did it. I survived. I I prevailed through the conditions and I'm proud of myself. I I finished nowhere near my like goal time whatsoever. And honestly, very early on in the race, I just decided I didn't care. I honestly just cared about finishing and I wanted to enjoy the race as much as possible. And I did under the conditions, which is really hard to do. I mean, the people who came out and like supported us were amazing. The volunteers who were out there were amazing. And really those are the real MVPs. Like they did not have to be out there. I actually ran into a group of girls who were standing out there in all of those conditions. You know, it was real fuel temps in the 20s, 40 mile per hour wind gusts, torrential downpour rain the entire time. And there were a group of ladies who were standing out there to support me with a sign. It was the cutest sign. It said 22, or sorry, 26.2. They said miles a pocket full of positivity or something like that. But it was amazing. Like just seeing them gave me so much more motivation for the rest of the race. It was around mile 23 and it was so needed and I'm so appreciative of them. I need to get in contact with them and thank them because they have no idea how much they helped me through the race. So if you were watching this and that was you, like seriously, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I can't even explain like how much that meant to me. And there were another group of girls a little bit later on, I don't know, somewhere between like mile 24 and 25 maybe who were like calling out. I didn't realize that they were cheering for me until I was like almost past them, but I heard them say pocket full of primary and that was just incredible. And then Billy, aka Mr. Pocket Full of Primary and my friend Chelsea, her handle is teaching and caffeine. They waited at the finish line for me, which was amazing. I didn't know Billy was going to do that. He had originally planned to go to the Kennedy Museum, but he actually got to the finish line at 9 a.m. and stood out there until I finished, which I finished pretty darn late because I was running so slow because I was so miserable. So I'm just so appreciative of them for doing that because it made me feel so special and my, it made my finish that much better. So overall, incredible day despite what happened. I'm happy. I'm honestly just proud of myself for finishing. I will talk more about this when I get back home, but for now, I'm going to sleep. Good morning, YouTube. It is one day post-marathon. It is Tuesday morning. I'll be honest, I don't feel much better than yesterday. My body still is in a lot of pain. Kind of feel like I've been hit by a truck, but this is totally typical. I mean, it's my fifth marathon. I've always felt like this afterwards. I did take some of the Arna Sport by Highlands, which is like post-workout relief. So hopefully that starts kicking in soon. I'm gonna take it every like two hours to help. But I woke up earlier than I typically do. I got up at 8.30. I was planning on sleeping in as late as I possibly wanted, but my body actually was up and awake by 8.30. So I went ahead and got ready. Billy and I have packed up all of our stuff and my friend Chelsea is coming to pick us up probably in about 30 minutes or so and she is taking us to see the Blue Man Group, which I'm really excited about. And then she's gonna take us to the airport. So I'll make sure that I grab some clips of that and then probably the next time I talk to you will either be at the airport or when I get home.
Life update. I am home from the airport and my original idea was that I was going to come home and I was going to reflect on the trip and I know I talked a little bit last night but I wanted to do that more so like when I was actually coherent with my thoughts and not like right after running a marathon. However, I do not feel good right now whatsoever. Um, I definitely feel like I'm getting sick. It started this morning shortly after I vlogged and then it's just gotten progressively worse throughout the day. Started with a sore throat and then my nose is a little stuffy and I just overall feel really bad. <laughs> and then I felt nauseous the past several hours and like I'm hot but I have chills and I'm sure it's all related to the weather yesterday but I just feel so bad right now and on top of that I'm exhausted and I'm sore and I'm stressed out because it's currently like almost midnight and I still need to shower and I still need to dry my hair and I still have to like get my stuff ready for tomorrow and I need to pack a lunch and I need to figure out what I'm doing for breakfast and all these like little things that have to do with coming back from a trip and like going back to school the next day and to top it off I have news crew coming in the morning which like is great and I'm excited about that and especially because they're coming in and they're gonna like talk to some of my students and I think that's amazing but at the same time like I just feel so bad right now and like I'm stressed out because of that so I'm gonna keep it short because I really need to get going on stuff and just get to bed and I didn't want the vlog to end like this but at the same time like this is what I'm currently going through so I'm not going to like hide that from you all I'm just not having a great night um but after some more reflecting on the race. I honestly am happy that it ended the way that it did. And I didn't think I was going to say that, but I am. And I think I'm happy that it ended this way because it makes a better experience to be able to share with my students. I'm gonna go back to them tomorrow with the message of, hey, sometimes you work really hard for something and you prepare for months and months and months and then it doesn't turn out the way that you wanted it to and that's okay because it's more about the journey than the destination and I feel like this was the perfect example of perseverance definitely and I feel like yesterday's race made me a stronger runner and just a stronger person in general and you know it's hard in a way to have months and months of training and then to feel like you couldn't put that to use on race day because of the elements. I mean, I did put it to use, but not the way that I was hoping to. However, finishing in those conditions is so much more meaningful than like getting a personal record. Do you know what I mean? Like going through that and experiencing that and being able to finish just means so much more to me and made me so much stronger than like running a faster time ever would. So overall, I'm happy that it turned out the way that it did. Again, I said it last night, but I'm just so grateful to Highlands and everything that they did for me throughout this entire experience. I truly cannot thank them enough. And I just know how incredible of a company they are now. Like just all the people that I met that work for them, they're just such genuine people and they made us feel so good. And it just was incredible. So thank you to Highlands, everyone who had any part of like,
like this team truly from the bottom of my heart thank you i can't tell you that enough also i wanted to say thank you to all of you people watching this who have just supported me from the very beginning again you have no idea how much it means to me and you all kept me going from the very beginning when i announced that i was doing this you have been so supportive and it truly truly helped me and even last night posting a picture from my race and just kind of explaining like well i didn't get a pr i a huge blister that split open on my foot but i'm really proud of myself like hearing all of you just support me and that was amazing so thank you from the bottom of my heart um i'm gonna go ahead and end this because like i said i'm just not doing great right now but i wanted to thank all of you for watching this vlog if you made it this far go ahead and give the video a thumbs up you all know the drill you know how important it is to me if you have not already subscribed to me go ahead and do so and as always thank you for watching i love you all so so much don't forget to think positive and i'll catch you guys in the next one Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you want to check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. In the description box, you'll find links from my Teachers Pay Teacher store along with my PO address if you're interested. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.